The Homeworld series of video games started way back in 1999 with Homeworld 1 on PC, although at that time it wasn't called Homeworld 1, it was just Homeworld. It was a real-time strategy game set in space utilising all three dimensions, and it was pretty groundbreaking at the time. 1999 was a pretty big year for gaming, it had Quake 3 Arena, it had Unreal Tournament release in it, and yet Homeworld was still the highest rated game for the year. So it's clearly got some credentials behind it, right? We're talking a massive real-time strategy set in space. Sounds right up my street, right? Well, what have I told you, perhaps controversially, that I've never actually played a Homeworld game before Homeworld Mobile? Yeah, I know. Ultimately, this is the kind of game that you'd think I would be an expert at, that I'd have played loads, I'd know the lore inside out and all of that, because there is a lot of lore to these games. But no, I had never played one before playing Homeworld Mobile. And ultimately, I bounced off the beta twice. I genuinely, I downloaded the beta, I jumped in, I gave it a go, and then just stuff happened and I was like, mm, nah, and I jumped out again. Then I thought, you know what, okay, this was pretty cool, let's jump back in and give it another try, and again, mm, nah, things happened and I just couldn't get into it. Now that Homeworld Mobile has actually launched, well, I'm having a lot more fun with it. So in today's video, I want to talk about what this game's about, how it basically works from a very newbie standpoint, and just to showcase it in action and ask the question, has it been worth the wait? Well, if you enjoy this video, please let me know by hitting a like on it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for all things mobile gaming and space, and well, let's jump right in on this one, shall we? So Homeworld, as I said, it's traditionally a real-time strategy game, but Homeworld Mobile is a bit more of an MMO. These people going around here are indeed other players. That ship that's just passed me, the ones that passed me a moment ago, these are all other players moving around doing their thing. It's very adjacent to EVE Echoes, for sure, um, but rather than controlling a ship, you control a fleet, or rather you control the ship and its fleet. The best way to describe this is for me to just jump in and have a look at the fleet configuration. So you can see that my expedition ship is here on the left. This is the ship that I'm flying. It's the ship that everyone starts off with in the game. You can upgrade this and change this later. I have not reached that point in the game. You can then add three squads. I've gone for a resource collector, well, two resource collectors because I was doing a mining mission earlier, and a plasma bomber squadron, which I had for defenses, but I can now change that second resource collector for something like an interceptor squadron. There we are, that's now added in. And you can have escorts as well, and apparently these do expand out later. You get more of these, things like destroyers. At the moment, I've only got frigates. You can see here I've got a veteran pulsar fr assault frigate. I'm currently using this veteran MD assault frigate. Um, it appears to have slightly better stats. I'm still very much learning what all this means. I know this is a Tech 2 ship, um, but what does that symbol next to the two on the right hand side there mean? That sort of, it looks almost like the uh, the chamber of a six shooter cult pistol or something like that. I don't know. And that does bring me to my first big complaint with Homeworld. And that's that while I'm trying to play this game and trying to learn it, it has a tutorial which is a lot better than it had in the beta, but ultimately you just get slapped with symbols. And it's like, what do these even mean? Like I can tell that here for the resource locator, or rather for the interceptor squadron, I can tell that if I tap that they're going to undock, and sure enough, there they go, out they all come. But what do all these other symbols now mean? Like I can guess that the triangular one there is sort of a flight pattern, so how they're going to fly, and fair enough to that one. But what's this? What does that even mean? And there's no way to long press on these to actually tell you what these symbols mean. All I've been able to do so far is kind of tap on them and figure out that in, well, in this case, um, one of those is passive, one of those is defensive, and the one on the far right is the aggressive mode, so that when you have your, like, interceptor squadron flying around you, you can see it in the little V there, um, it will actually go off and shoot at other stuff, right? That's kind of how this works. Anyway, let's bring those back to my ship now. And essentially, you have your ship plus your little frigate escort, and you go around doing your missions and earning rewards and cool stuff like that. So, to give an example of this, we can open up my missions here, we can see I've just completed one so I can collect the rewards from it, which in this case is going to be a bunch of experience and some B-type ore at tier 1. 
I've then got some assignments here to do. You can see that where I need to go to next. Now, I could zero to complete assignments at Missoula. So I can just hit go to here and it should take me through to how to get there. But essentially you can use these icons at the top right as well. So if I just to showcase that, you know, you can tap through. That's the main screen, like our combat screen. Then we've got the local area or we can come all the way out to the galaxy map and it's a huge galaxy. Okay, it's not Eve by any stretch, but it is pretty big and I'm excited to see more of this as I go through the game. Let's open up the one that it's asked for, tell a dim and we are going to jump there. I think the hyper jump strength, that 50 out of 30, it's, I recently upgraded my ship's ability to hyper jump which is that cool sort of like reverse 3D printing effect you see on screen there. Um, Ultimately, I recently upgraded that. I don't think it costs you to jump because I can jump and then jump straight back. I think it's just that I can only go as far as 50 and this one saying it's only 30 away. Now the loading times are okay. They're not awful. They're not exactly great either. Um, it's a little bit frustrating that you jump frequently and it's a loading screen even if you're jumping in the same system. Um, but yeah. We've come to our new area here. I've got a new station. That station doesn't have half the abilities of some of the bigger ones, like I can't do the whole shipyard, but we do have some other stuff going on there, like a market. Obviously, the ability to buy stuff in this free-to-play game is gonna be pretty available. We can scan and look for stuff in the system here. Was there anything nearby? Well, yeah, we've got a couple of unknown signals. We've got some planets around. Um, no mining this time, but there is an outpost. So we can have a look and eh, script. Let's just jump into one of these unknown signals and see what is going on here. Use scanner to unlock travel. Is there a way I can scan that a bit better? I think I need to get a bit closer, but otherwise relic site, there we are, relic signature beta. Ah, oh, it's just like Eve Echoes, isn't it? So we get these little animations every time you can skip them and it's a good thing you can because if you've got any ships undocked, um, yeah, you do have to wait until everything docks up one by one and that can take ages. Fortunately, you can skip it. This bit you can't skip, which is kind of infuriating because it's just a following a line and then into a loading screen, which again, do take just that little bit longer than I would like. But once we're there, hopefully we've got some cool action that I can showcase to you folks um, about how this game actually works. I know it's a hyper jump, but it does remind me of 3D printing. Relic Signature Beta. Let's have a look. So we've got into the overview here. We receive an automated distress call, but no answer came from the crew. We should secure the artifact before scavengers come. Okay, cool. That doesn't tell me where the artifact actually is around here. I can kind of look around and get a feel. Uh, nothing much there, but we've got some scavengers coming in. You kind of get these mission sites. You can see I've got my ships out here. Um, that one on the left there is my resource collector that can go mining or it can be repairing our ships. Both of my interceptors and bombers are out, as is my frigate. Um, let's jump back to the layout here and have a look and see if I can see where I'm going. Annoyingly, this is as far out as the map goes, so if you want to move around, you do kind of have to look around. But there's some cool little ways to move, like you can just drag from the ship and decide where you want to go with it. Um, but I kind of don't know where I'm going. I think probably let's jump towards that direction. We can kill these guys, at least. That's something I can show you. And this is ultimately my, I don't even really want to necessarily call it a complaint. Complaint really is the wrong word. It's just a bit of a rub. Like I play EVE Online, I play EVE Echoes. I'm used to a video game being a little bit obtuse in how it works and not necessarily telling you everything. This game really doesn't tell you much at all. Like, you kind of just are expected to do stuff. And okay, there's a part of me from, like, my old NES gaming years and that that's pretty cool on that, that, yeah, it's awesome that, at the end of the day, the game doesn't hold your hand and does want you to try things and to do things. But to the same token, this is the modern day. We left those years behind for a reason. And I kind of wish there was just a bit more direction in this game sometimes. Like, the tutorials aren't bad, for the most part, they teach you everything that you need um, and you kind of get an idea of where you're going and how things are working and it's not terrible by any stretch. You do have to really pay attention to it, but like here, collect the relic. Okay, where is it? That's not the relic, that's my resource collector. Is the relic one of these ships? Is that what the relic is? And I can drag and I can move around and that, but 
it'd be nice to know where the relic is, you know. Or just to have an idea, because I'm still very early on in the game here. But anyway, anyway. I think this is also probably not a bad time to talk about monetization. Ultimately, this is a free-to-play game. You can pick it up and buy a complete, uh, play it completely free. It is an MMO game. So there is obviously a market involved. And, well, it seems fine. Like, it seems that it's just in-game currency and stuff that you can buy, some blueprints that you can otherwise make yourself, and so on and so forth. But I just don't, I don't know. I don't know, it's, it's a, probably a bit too early to tell. Like if I open up the market here, you can see that there's things like these booster packs that contain some adamant and some credits and stuff like that. Some materials, then you can use that adamant to buy other things here. A lot of it I can't buy at the moment. I, I picked up today's free currency pack. I have no idea what a Higaran recruitment token is, um, but I can buy those apparently. Um, you can buy batteries, arrays, I just assume these are ship parts, these are blueprints and ships that you can buy um, in order to build things, um, but the game has pretty much given me everything I need at this point in time. Of course there are starter packs and there's a battle pass as well somewhere in here, I can't remember where it is, you saw it a moment ago. Ultimately, the monetization kind of seems okay, so my concern isn't really with monetization here. Um, I'm enjoying the game, like really enjoying it. I just, I'm not entirely sure sometimes what I'm supposed to be doing, you know? Like this, it's awesome telling me, get the relic signature, go and analyze the relic, collect the relic. Where is the relic? I don't know where the relic is. Like there, give me a clue, man. There's no information going on here about where a relic is. And I know some of you are saying, what about these blue circles? Those, those are my other ships. Those are my other ships, like there's my frigate and my two uh, interceptor and bombers there and the other little sphere above it in the middle of the screen now is the resource collector. Those aren't the relic. So where's the relic? Where, where actually is it? Like there, there's no information, there's so little information this game gives you sometimes. And I kind of enjoy that, but it does mean that like right now it, it, it makes for some pretty boring footage as I'm trying to explain that actually I'm really enjoying this game. Maybe you should check it out. Maybe I should be making some content on this. I wouldn't mind making content on this if that's the kind of thing you folks might enjoy. But I'm not really selling it very well at the moment, am I? Because the game can do this sometimes and I don't want to edit this and start this video again with something more exciting. I've got other footage I can just put over this and showcase to you that there's like combat in this is really, really cool. But there's just like, so little information. Lazarus Station asks us to help some Higaran outposts on the frontier. That's kind of like all I know. Find signals by scanning. I is that what I need to do? Like, ha have I just come here and now I need to jump away and scan some more signals? Is that what's going on? Progenitor artifact, interact. Oh, there we are. See, again, sometimes it's really, really simple like this. Like, clearly, okay, I just need to move to that artifact over there. And maybe I can do some stuff, oh, and yeah. But nowhere has it ever told me that. And you can say, oh, but it's got numbers there. Yeah, th this one, this one's normally things like planets and that, and it just doesn't really do much. I've never had to use it. This green one is for friendly ships, red one is for enemy ships, blue is for nearby asteroids in range, and, you know, things like that. Oh, okay, that feels stupid. But this is kind of my point, and I'm, I'm leaving that in. I'm genuinely leaving this in just to showcase that I'm really enjoying this game, but my goodness, it can be obtuse sometimes. There we are, we got the relic, it's been examined by the hangar now, objective complete, huzzah, right, okay. Mission complete. And they're cool, fun missions. I actually like the combat system. There's a part of me that's really hoping oh, I shouldn't have gone to system, I shouldn't have gone to station, because now I'm basically going to jump away and then have to go through a loading screen only to scan again and then go through a loading screen. This is infuriating. Like, there's no two ways about it. This is infuriating, but it's minor. It is minor, but it's still infuriating that, yeah, because I tapped a button there, I now got to sit through that animation, sit through a loading screen, only to pretty much jump back to where I was. And it does annoy me that the loading is so frequent in this. It's, it's long and it's frequent. Anyway, there we are. Let's scan again. Oh, boy. Did we find anything? Ah, oh, Kangasian Signal. This is usually a combat site, so that's a cool one to actually get to showcase that. Awesome, let's skip the animatic. Can't skip this one. Why can I not skip this one? Literally, it's it's not a loading screen. 
Like, I wouldn't mind if it was hiding a loading screen, but, well, it's not. There's another loading screen, and it, it feels like... I've, I've played, like, four hours of this this morning, and it feels like a good third of that... Okay, maybe not a third, probably about a quarter of that has been just sitting at loading screens. And it's like, I want to get on with this. I want to discover cool new ships. I want to learn more about the lore of this universe, because there's so much going on. There is genuinely so much going on in this game. It is really cool. Okay, so we can see the ships are over that way. I'm going to move to a position kind of this way. And it is real-time strategy. Now, there's no two ways about it. There is genuine strategy going on here about where you move and position your fleets, what you're using against which ships. I'm going to bring the support one at the back there. When you use your abilities, like this early into the game, I can see, you know, things are pretty straightforward. There's nothing crazy going on here. Like, you can just pick your targets and go, right, okay, this one, let's just focus fire on this guy first. And let all my ships go in. And I've got some abilities on the left-hand side. Like, this top one gives me heavier firing cannons for a few moments. Um, whereas the bottom one gives this huge burst of missiles that go through. And yeah, that's really cool. The combat system I really like, and it's pretty to watch. Like, there's nothing crazy going on here. This isn't Infinite Lagrange by any stretch, but it's involved, it's interactive, and all crikey, we're taking some serious damage on the plasma bomber here. I can't repair that. Maybe I can bring that back into my hangar and it will repair in there because, oh boy, that's a lot of damage they're taking. Um, and now we can go over here and attack this one. And I really like this combat system. The combat system is a lot of fun, and I'm waiting for sort of more of the game to open up with more abilities, with different types of ships for me to use that are more sort of involved. Like having four capabilities is going to be pretty awesome. Maybe having a different type of expedition frigate, like uh, expedition ship, whatever it is, cruiser or whatever it is. This one's kind of cool. Like, I don't dislike it. I think it's quite a cool looking ship. I would just like to see what other ones there are. It's one of my big draws of games like Eve and Eve Echoes. I like looking at all these different ships and getting a feel for them. Yeah, apparently if you bring those back to your uh, hangar, yeah, they do seem to fully heal. Awesome. I know that that happens with the resource collector. I've used that a few times where I've sent the resource collector to start repairing my ship or one of my frigates or something like that, only for the resource collector to come under heavy firepower. Um, and like nearly die it's one of those things that that's probably my biggest tip for new players in this is get used to bringing your resource collector back to your hangar it does fully heal the second it docks up so you kind of t let it out and heal up the ships you want to heal up only to then bring it back and uh like you know heal it heal it up itself there i'll get those words out in a moment cool so let's have a look here so we've got scout squadrons and we've got assault corvettes we're going to take the assault corvettes out first with some heavy missile firepower. It's fun. It's genuinely fun. I really like the, uh, the the combat gameplay. I really like the lore. The story has been fantastic so far. It's not voice acted, which was a minor disappointment from a game that has this much behind it. But equally, I get that not a lot of mobile games necessarily do. And if you start adding voice acting, it does suddenly mean that you struggle for localization. Like localization is always going to be more difficult in a voice acted game because you need to get local speaking voice actors, right? So yeah, I kind of get it. I kind of get it. And oh, crikey, there we are. My resource collector taking mad damage, not paying attention, too busy talking. Um, let's bring that back and get it some heals up and blast these guys out here. My bombers and interceptors seem to be doing a fine job. Here we are, and we can pull you straight back out, and it's fully healed. Nice and simple. I like the combat, I like the story, I like the gameplay. Even mining is pretty chill, and resource gathering's always fun, you know? It's it's a really cool game. I just wish there were... It's got some real little road humps in it. Like, the occasional mission will just come out of nowhere and completely just blindside you with not telling you what's going on. And that can genuinely be infuriating. Also, things like, again, what are those insignias? It's telling me, oh, you've just got a load of insignias. And I just don't know what those do yet. This loading screen situation is irritating. That I've clicked skip, but I still have to sit and watch this line be drawn, or be undrawn, then get the loading screen. Like, don't give me both. Give me the loading screen or the line. Merge it into one. And before you say, oh, well, maybe that's the point, no, it's not, because if I've, I've jumped from areas that are massively far away and areas that are pretty much right next to each other, and the full-on loading screen is the same each time. 
So, I don't know, loading is my biggest concern. The way that the game doesn't really explain much of itself would be my second concern. The market, as I said, I don't know. I want to tell you this doesn't feel pay to win. It doesn't. I've not made a single damn purchase at all yet. Game hasn't really pushed me to, but it's early days yet. As I said, I'm about four or five hours in, and ultimately I don't even know what these do. Like, what even are those? Interceptor Squadrons, three Interceptor Squadrons. Awesome, I've got Interceptor Squadrons already. Admittedly, mine are Tier 0, those are Tier 1. Um, oh, and yeah, Bella Somtor, who I guess is an officer that could help me do some stuff. Some Adamant and some credits, but I've been okay for credits. I've not needed to buy anything in the store that has, you know, Adamant usage to it yet. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll be back with a video on exactly how that works at some point in the future. This is me being able to sell stuff back to it, like rank one insignias, what are they? Why can I not long press on something and it tell me what they are needed to promote inexperienced officers? Okay, so I assume maybe that's to do with my bridge staff and my officers that I can use medals. There we are, rank insignias. Yes, you can use those to train up. Again, I've been given insignias before the game gave me the tutorial on how to do this. Plus, yay loading screens. I've no idea if what I'm doing here is even a good idea. I've just been given some items. I've figured out how they work and where you can use them. So I'm kind of just hoping that I can use them. And it looks like maybe the game has crashed, <sighs> which would be the third time today as well. So there are definite bugs going on here with Homeworld Mobile, but for the most part, I am enjoying it. Like there's no two ways about it. I am enjoying it. I've had a lot of folks in the community say, hey, Benzie, are you going to be covering this one? And the question has kind of been a I don't know, because I bounced off the beta twice. I, I genuinely bounced off it twice. I wanted to get into it, but I couldn't. But then again, I bounced off Infinite Lagrange a couple of times before I properly got into it. So who knows? Maybe if people want to see more Homeworld Mobile content, maybe I'll make some more of it. If that's you, please let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, yep, this has crashed. So I'm going to restart this and I'm going to continue playing for a bit. If you want to see more Homeworld Mobile content, I've got a couple more videos that I might do this week just showcasing how things goes on a bit um, and give an actual proper review of this rather than just a how is it. Um, I think we'll talk about this one more like further down this week, maybe next week, I don't know, depends on Iveco's content. But let me know if this is a game you're interested in. Let me know. I will make content on games that people enjoy. If no one's going to enjoy me making content, I'm not going to make it. And if people don't tell me that's what they want, then yeah, I'll probably miss it anyway. But yeah, yeah, definitely a crash here. Loading screen of death. I don't know if that's a Zimbabwe thing or if that's a, uh, a Homeworld mobile thing. Let me know your, your sort of opinions in the comment section down below. If you've been playing this, if this is something you've been enjoying or not enjoying, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And again, if you want to see me make content for this, shout it out. Otherwise, folks, happy sailing and see you in Homeworld mobile, I guess.